Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I want to go over something a little bit different, as always. <laughs> and as with Wargaming, I want to touch on the question of scale. Now, if you're just getting started, you know, you've got a limited budget or you're just getting into the hobby, then there is this question of scale to consider because there are a bunch of different games and you might notice that their miniatures are different sizes. Now, in Wargaming parlance, that's scale, also, I mean, normal modeling and such like that. But where model train enthusiasts will use things like HO, N, uh, T scale as shorthand for sort of how big they're talking something is, typically in Wargaming we'll refer to those by millimeters. So, for example, here I've got a 28 millimeter figure. This guy's from Warlord Games, he's an American infantry figure. And he's part of this group that gets called Heroic Scale. Now, back in the day when you were making metal miniatures, you know, getting fine details, especially around faces, was a little bit more difficult. So part of the style that grew up out of this was to have big heads and big hands. And that got nicknamed Heroic Scale. And that's what we've got here. A lot of kits today still use this as, uh, as their baseline. You'll see other uh, companies, they'll do a slightly more realistic uh, what gets called 28 millimeter scale and a good example of this is the Perry miniatures range or if you've seen any of their Lord of the Rings miniatures uh, go ahead and put a, a Man of Gondor next to a Man of the Empire from uh, Warhammer and you'll see the difference between a 28 mil and a heroic 28 mil scale figure so there's a little bit of that to, to look at Ordinarily, you'll see these heroic scale stuff still being quite the business because they allow us a great deal of detail, particularly in faces and stuff like that, which is where a lot of painters like to bring that expressiveness to a model. So these make really good gaming figures. Now these here, this is from uh, Warlord Games. This is one of their Sherman kits. And it is ostensibly a 28 mil scale figure. Um, there is some argument especially when considering heroic scale infantry, whether 156 scale or 1 to 48 scale tanks are better, that's entirely a matter of, uh, of taste. Just when, if you are looking at getting into that, stick to the same scale throughout your whole force, otherwise you're going to have some very strange effects. But what I want to talk about specifically is these little 15 millimeter dealies. These are really cool. If you're looking at getting into something like Bolt Action, or there's uh, Battle Group is out there too, and there are a bunch of other war games that use uh, normally heroic scale stuff, but can be played with 15mm stuff, and you'll tend to find that sometimes the ground scale works better with these smaller miniatures. There are also games like Flames of War, where you have a number of figures that are all based on a single piece of card, or plastic, or what have you. And it's a little bit more abstract there, versus normal skirmish games, which tend to do a one-to-one. -one. Now, Battle Group is a game that you can play one-to-one, -one, which is kind of cool. Bolt Action, you can also play quite happily one-to-one -one with these 15mm um, figures. So, to give you an idea, here is our Heroic Scale uh, Warlord Games American Infantryman. And here... <laughs> This is a 15 mil uh, American Trooper from the Plastic Soldier Company. And what a difference that is. Now, for the cost of a single one of these uh, 156 Shermans, I can get a platoon of five in 15 millimeter. So, cha-ching! If you're looking at getting started, particularly with tank heavy games, Bolt Action has a, a tank war scenario. Um, 15 mil, you know, your money will go a lot further. Same too with scenery. An interesting thing happens where scenery becomes that much more um, cost effective at that sort of scale. So, you know, maybe have a look around, do some research, see what you like the look of, and whether or not a game such as Bolt Action can be played in a smaller scale where you've got more on the table. So to that end today, what I'm going to do is paint some American infantry. You've already seen me do that, so I'm not going to go too far into the colors we're going to use. What I've got here is, haha, my sprue screw. <laughs> Any way that you can get a bunch of guys onto a single thing just to spray a bunch and paint them all at once. Uh, popsicle sticks are another really good one for this. 
This is just a bit of old cast off sprue that I had laying around. Dab of super glue, job's a good one. So nice and simple there. I'll just turn my light on. That's better. So ordinarily, I would go and uh, put quite a lot of detail on these 28 mil figures. Like you've seen me paint them before. But with 15 mil, it's a little bit more uh, impressionistic. Okay, you don't have the same amount of detail on a model to really make them pop in the same way. So you need to sort of pick your battles. What I'm going to do is deliberately introduce a lot more contrast and I'm going to paint these guys brighter than I normally would. Now how I'm going to do that is normally I'd start their trousers with flat earth, but I'm going to go straight to US field drab for this one. Then we're going to use normal sort of colors that I would for, um, for the rest of the uniform. So I've started out with a spray of Zandri dust because that's going to give me the base coat for their jackets. You know, after this, I'm going to do very little <laughs> to that. So to briefly touch on the webbing, I'm going to paint all of it in green gray. Now I've spoken a little bit about how the webbing changed color over the course of the war and the American uniforms became a little bit different, but I'm going to use green gray specifically because I'm going to have beige jackets and brown trousers. So I want to add a little bit of contrast to the model. With these 15 millimeter figures, the thing to bear in mind is imagine how a video game renders somebody who's standing in the distance. They don't put everything into rendering those distant characters. And as they come closer, you start to see more of that detail. With these guys, think of them as distant figures, because unlike your 28 mil figures that you pick up and you have a look at, or you can see them clearly on the table, these guys are going to be deployed as units uh, and they're going to look great with very simple sort of painting techniques. So we'll get onto that. So first up, we're gonna get the US field drab on the trousers, and you'll see it's not much different in color. It will look a lot different once we've got a wash on there and once that has dried. Um, but for the time being, just go around, get all their trousers, avoid their gaiters if they are wearing them, and this will take me just a couple of minutes. So the trousers now have that US field drab on, and you can see it dries a little bit darker and gives us some nice contrast to those Parsons jackets. So I'm not going to do anything to the jackets if I don't have to. So in that mind, I'm going to be quite careful as I put on this flat brown to do all their weapons. And in the same way as I would with the uh, larger figures, the 28 mil figures, I'm going to paint the whole weapon in this brown and then tidy up later with anything that I need to. With those rifles blocked in, I've purposefully avoided part of this BAR on the end here, because I know that's going to be black later. Now I'm going to do the skin, and for this I have Army Painter's Tanned Flesh, but uh, Bugman's Glow from Citadel works well in this place. And I'm just going to go in and lightly dab hands and faces. Now that skin you might notice is a little bit blobbier and nowhere near as precise as I would normally go for. And part of that is going to come down to how it'll look once it's had a wash over it. So you see where hands are joining weapons and stuff like that. Once there's a wash on there, that's going to take care of most of that. And, you know, I can tidy up later. I'm not too worried about how precise it is as it's going on. I just want it to be in the right place. If it blobs out a little bit, eh, not too bad. We can fix that. What I've got now is my green gray, and we're going to go around and carefully paint in these little areas of webbing. So if I get up close here, you can see there's not a lot of them on these uh, on these figures. But you're going to want a smaller brush here and just go around and fill in belts, straps and pouches with your green gray. With the green gray on, you can see it helps us break up the shape of the models a little bit and we get some nice definition. You know, it makes them look a little less sort of plastic army man and we start to see the shape of these guys coming out some. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and do their helmets. We've got brown violet for this. And again, one of these colors I'd usually use as a highlight is going to go straight on as my main color for these guys. Now, while those helmets are drying, Let's just dab in a little bit of leather brown to do their boots. And don't worry about the uh, straps of the gaiters under the boot, just paint over them. With boots, helmets, trousers, webbing, guns, skin done, it doesn't look like much. <laughs> There's not very much work into these guys. I mean, they aren't particularly difficult to do. Um, but you see the flat colors, they start to look a lot better. 
you know, they they are pretty all right, especially considering the distances that we, we're going to see them at. So over a flat color comes, as always, my favorite, Agrax Earthshade. And I'm just going to bucket this all over the models. And this will reintroduce a bit of depth, bring down some of those tones, and fix up any of the mistakes that we might have made. We're going over and sort of blobbing stuff. So let's go ahead and cover these guys in Agrax Earthshade. With the wash applied, you can see how much that's darkened down those uniforms, and it's given us a nice bit of shading into some of the crevices that we've got. It really makes a difference on these 15mm figures, guys. I can't stress it enough. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do, I mean, you could quite happily put these on the tabletop. I would blacken the guns and stuff first, but for the uniforms, I mean, much of a much. Once they're on the table with about 80 of their friends, they're going to look great. Trust me. So, doing those guns, they'll be ready to rock and roll. But I'm going to highlight their jackets, just because I think there's a little bit more we can do to make them pop, and it'll be nice and simple. Now I've got here, this is a Vallejo Air Color, which you can use straight out of the pot, just apply with a brush. This is US Desert Armor. If you're looking for a substitute, Shabti Bone from Citadel is a pretty good one for that. Um, it's a little bit more yellow than the Desert Armor I'm going to use though. So, all it is, same as ordinary highlighting, is just quickly bash on where I want the jackets to look lighter. Now, unlike my normal sort of highlighting, I'm actually going to do most of the jackets in this highlight color because I want that high contrast. You know, talking about how they're going to um, how they're going to look at a distance, I don't want the edges highlighted as much as the whole jacket to be brighter. So I'm going to go around. I'm going to do the whole jacket, and you'll see what I mean when those are finished. And with that highlight applied, you can see I haven't been too careful about where I've put it. I've really been a little bit more impressionist, let's say. If I flip them around and you take a look at the backs, what I've done is I've used that highlight color to accentuate the gaps between the webbing and introduce a little bit of the folds of those fabric again. But honestly, you know, you don't have to worry if you're getting it in the right place. You just put it where you think it's going to look the best. So the last real step is to go ahead and blacken their guns. So I've got my Vallejo black here, because that's going to cover really well. And now it's just going in and carefully, not painting over any hands in the process. Whoops. <laughs> oh dear. I see though, a little bit of water. I can flush away most of that mistake. And at 15 mil, I don't care to fix it. <laughs> so I'm going to blacken their guns. Um, and again, be fairly impressionist. You know, if it's going to be a little bit too much black, or if I'm going to get too close to something, you know, it, it doesn't matter. All right, so I lied. There's one more thing that I think we can do here that'll really make these guys stand out that little bit more while keeping it fairly simple. And that is to just really lightly get in with some Kislev flesh and just do the backs of hands and any really exposed parts of the faces, okay? You don't, like, I'm, I'm literally just blobbing it on, you see. I'm not following individual fingers or anything like that because I would drive myself insane. But just a little bit of extra oomph. And when we get up to the faces, let's see how close I can get him. Ooh, boy. All I'm going to do is, is just a quick blob of his nose, his chin, and let's, let's paint a little bit in there. And that's all I'm going to do. Yeah, I think when that's done, they're going to look the business. Now there we have it, all based up and finished. Now you'll see I've only got four guys on this 40mm round base. Uh, the fifth guy, he's still got painted, <laughs> but he's going to go on a different base. When I'm doing sort of one-to-one -one scale stuff, like uh, bolt action, for example, with these 15 millimeter guys, I like to base four or five to a base. Now, with the Americans, I've deliberately done four because squads of 12 lets me do doot, 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 three bases. I can put a sergeant and a BAR on one of them, and you know you can remove quite easily and move them around fairly simply as well. So as you can see, once they're based up, you know they really don't look too bad. There's not a huge amount of detail on the miniatures, and the paint job is, you know, nothing to write home about. 
But once they're in context, like I'm always saying, you know, they look pretty cool. And I'll drop down, now this one is painted for a British force, but you know, there's a Sherman alongside with them. Um, let's put down Universal Carrier as well. And you can see very quickly how once these are all on a table together, you know, they're really gonna look the business. So hopefully there guys, there's something interesting or something useful to you that you found. You know, Wargaming on a budget, these 15 mil figures are a great place to start from and they're nowhere near as difficult to paint as people seem to make them out to be. So, as ever guys, any questions, you just drop them in the comments down there or you can get in touch on my Facebook or my Twitter. So thank you very much for your time and you guys enjoy the rest of your day.